In my last video, I did my first mapping with SkyBrows, first with the DJI Mavic Air 2, using the SkyRoss app to automate the flight, and then with the DJI Air 3, which is unfortunately not supported by the app, and got pretty decent results, especially with the DJI Air 3 and the 3X lens. But now it's time to compare videogrammetry, SkyBrows, side by side with the classic photogrammetry, WebODM as an example, and to be honest, the results were quite surprising. But see for yourself. In this video today, I will give you a first introduction into the flight planning, which drones are supported, which not, and what to do if your drone is not supported. Next, I will do a comparison between the tools and features of WebODM and SkyRoss, and finally, the quality comparison which tool will give you better results. For the field mapping test for this video, I plan to use my good old Mavic Air 2 because it is one of the supported drones by the flight app from SkyRoss. But it seems I didn't read the fine print. Wide browse, which I need over here, is not available, only the orbit. So this is for the Mini and Air series. And if you scroll further down the list, you see what are fully supported drones, which are semi-supported, and in my case, the DJI Air 2 can only do the orbit. So, there I was, out in the field, and I uh, recognize I can't do it with the Mavic Air 2, but lucky for me, I had another drone in my bag, the DJI Air 3. If your drone is not supported, or in my case, the DJI Air 3, there are some more steps you have to do. For me, the best way is as follows. First, with drone link, I will draw a rectangle around the field I want to map. So drone link will give me exact flight path I should take. And uh, the overlap I can also set over here. Then, I recreate the same flight path in Litchi, export it as a CSV file, and then convert this CSV file to a KMZ file with the G2 Waypoint mission and then import it into the controller. If you want to have more details about this workflow, I created a separate video, the link you will find in the description below. For the comparison, first we start with the sky browse. Here we are in the 2D view and it gives you basically two versions, the sketch and the auto photo. What you can do from here is not very much. You can download it. You can choose the format you want to have. Let's go for the TIFF format. You can download it. It will open in a new window. And from here you download it. Now let's compare this to WebODM the one we did with uh, stitching together the photos. First of all, we are in the 2D, as before with the SkyBrows, but we have different layers. First, start with the auto photo. Obvious thing is you can zoom in and out. It's not static. You can zoom in to see more details. And you can also change things like how you want to have the contrast, different ways. And you can export as well, different formats, JPEG, PNG, KMZ, TIFF. Now let's have a look at the other possibilities. First, there is the measurement. You can create a new measurement right in the 2D model. So we start our measurement, but putting the first dot over here and measure across the field and we get the length. It is around 120 meters. We use this information afterwards for the sky brows to check the results. But there's even more. You can also change how much you will see from the base map and from the photo. You can change to the plant health analysis and again possibility to make it clearer you 
can change the way it is displayed. So to detect where plants are not healthy. So many things you can do here and also download this, the plant health in different formats. And you have also different models like the surface model, the terrain model. So in this regard, I would say you've got much more possibilities with WebODM compared to SkyBrowse. Next up in our comparison is the 3D view. Again, we start with SkyBrowse. In the model, we recognize some black holes, so where no data was uh, created. And to avoid this, there's a little toggle called Hyper, which will fill up the gaps. Very nice. Next up, you see a GPS log not available. This is because we are not using the SkyBrowse app for flying, but instead using the Universal Upload, where no GPS data will be uploaded. For this, we have to tell SkyBrowse the dimension of the field, and all you have to do is take a known length, and this one we know from the WebODM model. So we start from here and to this point, and we know this was around 120 meters. We scale it. And now he is able to take measurements because now he knows exactly the factor, how to calculate the sizes over here. You can take different measurements, a line, a polygon, clipping, and a very handy feature is a screenshot. So if you want to have a screenshot exactly the way you see the model at the moment, you just can give it a name and generate a screenshot. But that's it already what you can do in SkyBrowse with a 3D view. Now let's compare SkyBrowse with a 3D view of WebODM. We're here in the model and uh, similar to SkyBrowse, there's a possibility to do this texture if there are points missing to enhance the quality of your model. Another nice feature is if you try to zoom in and out with the mouse wheel, it's sometimes, as you can see, not very easy. So here you can work with a field of view, with a slider, to have more precision when zooming in and out. We have different possibilities. Example for the background. If you don't like the black or gradient background, you can switch to the sky view. And from here, you can also do measurements. So this is very similar to SkyBrowse. It's basically the same possibilities, with the exception that you don't have to give a scale or adjustment before. Here, WebODM has all information from the GPS. So there's no need to tell WebODM what the length of one side of the field is to do the adjustment. This is already done for you. Another nice feature is you can export all different formats. For instance, you can export the terrain model, the surface model, a point cloud, and uh, a texture model. So this is much more what we have in the sky browse. Only thing missing at this point is the possibility to generate a screenshot of what you're seeing at the moment and export this one. For the comparison, arrange both side by side. On the left hand side, WebODM with a model created by Photos, and on the right hand side, SkyBrowse where the model was created by just one video. Now to be fair in the comparison, I took the same altitude, the same flight path, exactly the same. Altitude was 68 meters. And as a freemium user, the maximum you can do is 1080p videos, 4K is only for a subscription user. So now let's have a first look into the result. First thing I mentioned in the introduction to features that you can use the hyper to fill up gaps automatically. This doesn't work. 
seems we've got not enough information that they can do this nice feature. Okay, we have to go back. No way. Now let's zoom in. I'll take this tree as a reference. Oops, it's hard to navigate. So here we are. There we have the tree. And you can see it's not really clear, the picture. Now let's compare this with WebODM. Same scenario. Uh, let's zoom in here as well. For that, um, I'll take the field of view. I showed you before that this feature is quite handy to zoom in and out. And I have to go a little bit further to have the same resolution. And you can also already see here the result is much better. Take the tracks from the from the tractor over here. It's quite clear to see. And here you have basically nothing to see. Now within WebODM, I can do the texture model. This works, obviously. And we should get even more information. So now I think it's very clear um, who's got the better resolution. So this is the 3D view. Now let's switch to the 2D view. So here we've got the 2D view from SkyBrowse. Do the same with WebODM. In WebODM I can zoom in. This works. And again, go to our tree as a reference point. Very good to see. Now switching to SkyBrowse, there's no possibility to zoom in or out. You only can download the image. This is what we do now. We download it. But now we are in a browser with a picture. As you already can see from the size, 660 by 466. So there's no way I can zoom into this picture. Only thing what I can do, I can download it and then do the manual zoom in. And this is what I will do now. Now I opened the downloaded image with the preview from the Mac to do a little bit of zooming. And again, I'll take my tree as a reference. So let's zoom in in the TIFF we downloaded. For now, move the trees in the center to compare those. And uh, I see already the quality is not even near WebODM. So to summarize, with 1080p from the same height like we did with the WebODM, um, SkyBrowse is not comparable. The quality is not good enough. What I will do now, I'll meanwhile sign up for a trial for two weeks. This is what you can do and uh, try it with a 4K video to see if I get a better result. So doing the 4K video from the same altitude, 68 meters, as you can see from my screen from SkyBrowse was not very successful. I tried several things. From the bottom, 4K, 68 meters. This was done with the DJI R3 and D-Log and graded. It failed. I don't know if it's because of the 10-bit format. Then I tried the normal format from the DJI R3, uh, 4K, 30 frames per second. Uh, two versions. The first one I was lucky I had a sun. The second one is a little bit of shadows, but uh, both of them failed. So the final one, which worked for me, only chance I had was to lower the altitude. And uh, finally, I ended up with the 1080p, 35 meters. And this was the first result I could compare. This is the result from uh, SkyBrowse with the Freemium account in 1080p resolution. This looks already much better. And you can see that the toggle hyper is active. So now the software is able to fill up the gaps. This works. 
If you compare this one to one now with the 3D model of WebODM on the left hand side, you still see it's not as accurate. It's a little bit blurry here on the sky browse result, so not uh, exactly the same what we get with WebODM. Now let's compare the 2D view. So we switch to the 2D view. This is what we saw before. And um, Let's uh, again search for our tree, the one as a reference. And we do the same thing here with sky browse. And as before, you cannot zoom in from this part. What we have to do, we first have to download it and then take the downloaded picture for zooming in. At this point, I at least have the plus button from the browser. So let's try it. Okay, I'm getting closer. Now I can see at least in the browser some uh, comparison. So there's a tree, oh, you can see me over here and the landing pad. And um, do the same thing here in WebPodium to make it comparable. And uh, I think one more. So now, yeah, I'm not sure. What do you think? Which one is better? I think um, it's a fair play at the moment. Um, seems to be quite similar in quality. I think for the 2D view, I would vote for the sky brows as the better resolution. And for the 3D, I would vote for the web ODM. What do you think? Now to summarize the quality comparison. 1080p in an altitude of 68 meters. I think we all agree that was not good enough to compare with WebODM. There, clearly WebODM is the winner. 4K, same altitude. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get any of the models created. All 4K videos are tried to process failed. Then 1080p in 35 meters. I think we all agree this was comparable. Maybe the quality is somehow better in WebODM at the 2D model. Maybe a little bit better in uh, Skybrowse, but more or less the same. What's left? I could try to do a 4K because I think the stitching from the height of 68 meters was somewhat the problem. Maybe the 4K resolution in 35 meters will be able to stitch it, but then I consider it as an unfair comparison because if you do WebODM in 68 meters altitude and uh, Skyros in 35 meters, I don't think this is fair. And uh, another thing to compare, if you have to have such low height for flying, then somehow I doubt that Skybrows would be the best solution for all use cases. But now, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my channel, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.